I haven't even properly introduced you to Hosanna, been busy telling you about the leopard, but I haven't actually told you about this particular leopard who is currently sleeping off what I can only describe as the fullest belly I've seen in a long time. Now, you know when you have a big Sunday lunch or perhaps a big holiday dinner, and you just feel so full of food that you actually can't move and you have to kind of lie on the couch. That is what Hassan is feeling like right now. He's eaten a big meal and he's feeling really warm and quite puffed out actually, quite exhausted. Our Hosanna is only 15 months old, so he's just a little bit older than a year. And the fact that he's managed to catch and kill his own young impala ram is truly extraordinary. I'm very, very impressed with him. He is a big boy for his age, though. He is quite a big, quite a powerful leopard. And one day he's going to be a very, very impressive male. Now, Marisol, you want to know, well, how big do leopards get? Depends on if they're a male or a female. Hosanna means little chief, and he is a male and his sister Shongile is a female. Now, a female leopard will probably not get much bigger than around about 50 kilograms, probably usually in this area a little bit less, and the males can get anywhere up between about 80 to 100 kilograms. So that's over, close to over 200 pounds in some cases. Now, the biggest leopards that we know of are around about 90 to 100 kilograms, which is absolutely massive. That's basically double me. Uh, his father, or at least the leopard that we think is his father, his name is Tingana. And Tingana is a very, very big male leopard. Now, Hosanna has got some years before he gets to be that big. And he won't be big enough to compete for a territory until he's at least four years old, and he's only just over a year old now. But it could take him even longer, and he might not reach his full size until he's over seven years old, at which point he'll get a really thick dewlap around his neck, which is a flap of skin and muscle. Now, for Raphael, you want to know if leopards ever attack lions? No because as big as the biggest lion, um, big as the biggest leopard gets, a lion is always bigger. So a lioness, which is much smaller than the male, a lioness will be at least 50 kilograms heavier than a male leopard and much, much, much stronger. Uh, I've actually seen lions chase leopards before and if they catch them, they will kill them. So a leopard doesn't want to pick a fight with a lion. If a leopard sees a lion, the first thing the leopard's going to do is try and climb as high up into a tree as they possibly can. Or else, if the lion hasn't seen them, run away. Because all predators will kill other predators. The only time a leopard might fight a lion is if they find lion cubs, in which case they will kill the cubs as long as mum is not there. Uh, speaking of other animals, we, of course, are a type of animal. And Sienna, you want to know, will the leopards chase us? No. We're really lucky in that we've known this leopard pretty much since the day he was born. So he's become very used to us. He doesn't see us as food. And we've even been able to approach and sit with him on foot which is very special and very, very rare. Most of the time, if a leopard sees a human being on foot, they'll get up and they'll slink away and they'll, they like to be hidden, they like to be secret. They don't like to be seen at all. So they will slink off into the distance somewhere, but they won't chase you unless it is really desperately hungry or it's nighttime. At nighttime, it's very different. At night, leopards are much more dominant and you definitely don't want to meet one in the dark. Matthew, you want to know what would happen if I got out of the Jeep right now? I've said that Hosanna is comfortable with people on foot, but because he's got his kill here, he's going to be feeling extra protective about it, and I'm very, very close to him, so he hasn't seen me coming from far away. My, I've got, my guess is this is what he would do. He would stand up, he would hiss and snarl and probably growl at me and make quite a big scary sounding growl as a and then he'd get up and run away.
because even though he's strong enough to catch a male impala, he's still going to be scared of me, and he's going to be very confused by my behavior because he's used to us sitting in the vehicle. So I would never, ever do that to him because it would actually be really disrespectful, and it would be abusing the position that I'm in. This is his home, and he's let me get this close to him because he believes that I'm not going to hurt him or scare him. If I got out of the vehicle now, that's exactly what I would be doing, and I don't want to do that. We, these cubs are so comfortable with us, it would be such a shame to wreck it. It would be a terrible thing, a terrible selfish thing. Now, oh, Sophia, you can see he's found himself a comfortable patch of grass. You want to know, are there other places where leopards sleep? Yes, absolutely. Sometimes they sleep in the sandy parts of a dry riverbed. Sometimes they find themselves a really nice place underneath a thick bush, like that weeping wattle that Taylor showed you. And sometimes they sleep in trees. And they're actually quite picky about which trees they sleep in. They like to sleep in trees without thorns, which I guess if I were a leopard, I'd also want to sleep in a tree without thorns. That makes total sense. So these sorts of trees make a perfect hiding place for a leopard. Our leopard will sleep in a tree when it's really, really hot outside because then they've got shade and then they've also got the nice breeze that might not touch them otherwise if they were sleeping on the ground. But right now he feels safe enough and comfortable enough that he will sleep on the ground itself. That is marvelous. What a special surprise you were, Hosanna. I don't think you have any idea. I'm really happy to see him because I haven't seen him in a long, long time. So I'm happy, or at least not properly, so I'm happy to spend a bit of time with him. Oh, that piece of grass was tickling his ear and he just shifted his paw to get it away from his very sensitive ear. And you can see he flicks his ear every now and again that's because the flies are sitting on top of it and they're biting his skin. And that's why he keeps flicking his ears to get them off. And those of you with very keen eyesight and very good observational skills might even see that there's a tick inside of his ear as well. Oh, Hassan is not going to be doing much, not with that massive belly. In fact, I think he's planning on sleeping the afternoon away as all good teenage boys should. Apparently, Taylor's dying to show you something. 